we get this main bolt in here. So we're going to lift this dude up. And again, make sure that you got this guy on the outside. So it sits in there. Get that bolt through. Yeah, this would be a spot you can have an extra hand too. When you put this guy through the main head here, make sure that it's going through smooth. If it isn't, just kind of uh, get this thing screwed in, like literally screwed in there. But you can see if you bring the camera over here, right, right there, you can see how it's just kind of sneaking in there. That's when you get your bolt in, because we've got these uh, welded in here to try and hold this guy when it's from spinning. So, let's get this guy on there, and we'll continue this process of getting this guy spun on there. So as we tighten this, um, you want to make sure that you don't get it put in there all the way. Because what we're going to do, as soon as we got enough room, and this lock washer staying on there, we're going to bring this nut into play here. Hold it in there, square. Oops. Make sure you don't cross thread it because it is easy to do, but you can definitely tell. See how it's going in there now? And eventually it's going to start snugging itself in there. But for right now, we'll just get it in there enough to where it's going to hold, and then we're going to get this other side in there. So that we're set there. Again, make sure that bushing is installed in there. Get this side in. Don't forget the washer on the other side. Get that guy started in there. Get screwing in there. Get your lock washer in. When you just got enough to hold that lock washer, get your nut in there. Hold it against that welded block as straight as you can. Usually if you put this uh, lock washer to the outside, it makes it a little easier. But keep it uh, nice and straight so that you don't cross thread. See how that goes in? She's a beaut. So for now, we're just going to get this snug on there, right? There we go. Now we're going to take the back of this tail, and this is the crucial part we're, we're talking about here. So grab your uh, tail roller from your kit. So that's going to be this guy with the roller on it, right? <clears throat> Wes is holding that on there. Oh, golly gee. All right, so this part, if you get that camera, you want to center it on the top here. This is why we don't say exactly 22 inches all the time, right? We want to get this thing as centered as we can on this yoke tail right here. That is the crucial piece. That way it's got movement to go back and forth if we need to. And when it articulates down and up, it's got enough room to move. So we're going to try and get this as centered as we can on there. So we're going to get this bolt through, like there. Put your roller on in the middle. I don't know if you can see that. So it's going to go in, rollers in the middle, holding that tail up. Push it through there. Nylon lock wash nut there. And we'll just get this thing uh, snug on there for at the moment. So we're going to tighten that up in a minute. So <clears throat> that's actually your yoke assembly. Everything's still loose, right? The key to this and what we're going for is to have this thing as parallel to the frame as we can. So that means like right here. I'm going to try and get this as parallel to that as possible. So typically it's sitting down like this, which isn't bad. I'm going to get over there and take a look here and just uh, make sure that we are good to go. There's my tape. So if you look from the side here, we say like one to two inches. You may not 
have one to two inches, that's great if you do. Some frames are different than others, so it sets different. So that's just what it is. If it's like way less than that, most six inch frames, which this is, it's gonna sit about that much, which is just about like one and a quarter inches right there. But it's parallel to this. And that's what we're going for, ultimately. If that's not the case, and it's not sitting parallel to the frame, that's when you would adjust these guys accordingly so that it is parallel to it. But in our case, it actually is sitting nice and parallel to the frame. So uh, we don't necessarily need to snug these up, but you could if you had to adjust it um, to get it to stay where it needs to be there. The other crucial part, like I said, if you get the side shot here, that's about where we want it. Right underneath. All right. So from here, we're gonna make sure that we are even with this uh, bracket, our center bracket, not only front to back on this, but side to side as well. So this thing needs to be centered. We want this yoke tail to be centered on the, the coupler right here as well. So that's what we're gonna check right now, is to make sure that that's the case, that it's equal right to left and front to back. So I can tell right now that we've got a little bit more edge here than we do over here. So we're gonna to need to move it this way. You can tell that a couple ways. Probably the easiest way is just to take like from one side of the frame out, it can be the inside or out, and just measure it from there. So that's like three and a quarter. And on this side, you won't see it, but it's about two and three quarters. So you see it needs to go over. So we're just gonna bump this dude over to where it needs to be. A little more so. Look at that spider. And actually, in this case, I bet you three. Three. Yeah, we're just about perfect there. So let's see front to back. See, so 20 and a half is this side. Let's see if we're good here. Not quite. Yeah, we are actually 20 and a half. So if we would have put it at 22, it wouldn't have been right. So that's why we say definitely check this out. Make sure your yoke tail is centered on that. Wherever this ends up at, dude, that's where you got to be at. So don't worry about that 22. 20 and a half. So we're good here. We're good here. We're also good from side to side for our gap. That means that we're pretty much straight here on our yoke tail, so it stays centered. So we're good to go with that. So at this point, we can uh, kind of tighten these dudes down. We don't have to torque them all the way now, but just tight enough to where this doesn't move is what we're looking for at the moment here. But we're just about to the final torque spot too. So give us just a minute and we'll get you there. All right, so at this point, what we're gonna do, because um, what happens is sometimes with the, with the bracket, I wanna make sure that these are uh, you know, absolutely where they need to be at and this tail is centered, but it's not allowing me to do that because this is like rigid setup here with this. So it's actually got tension and stuff on it. So I'm gonna decouple it from the truck. I'm gonna back the truck out and let this just uh, hang like it normally would. So to do that, we can actually go to um, our, our un unhook procedures at the moment here, which is going to be to undo these latches here. But before we do that, um, I'm going to make sure that our height of our truck is where it normally sits. That way this thing isn't hopping out and it's not trying to be violently pulling out of there. So this was supposed to be at the top of the cup where 25 is where we measured it at. So that's where it normally rests at. So we're going to do that and we're going to bring up this tongue jack till it gets to 25 here. Am I going the right way? Oh. There we go. Let's get this guy there and lock. So once we know this is like at 25, we know that we can pull out of here 
where it normally rests at. And that's what it's all about, is making sure that that's the case. So keep that in mind when you're uh, decoupling this guy. Always get your tow vehicle back to its original ride height so you don't have any issues with it popping out violently or anything. So at this point, we can take the over center latches, undo each one, just like that. And quite honestly, we probably, anytime you have these latches on, you should really just put your linchpins in there. We did not do that at first. But just get in the habit of anytime you do these latches over, pop that linch pin in there. That way you know that it's on there and it's not coming out. These constantly have back pressure on them, so it's probably never gonna be the case, but you definitely wanna get these guys in there and utilize them. You just literally pop in and flop, flop over the side there. So just a little added benefit there. So I'll have him pull out of this guy right now. Um, one thing to make sure you have is your tires chalked on your trailer. And uh, that way this trailer's not moving off of your block or anything. And uh, I'm just gonna pull out. Yep. Beautiful. That's good. All right, so now we're decoupled um, and it's gonna allow us a little more flexibility with this. Obviously you see that this guy is now mounted on this. Um, I do suggest doing a coupler lock on here. Um, I'll show you that here in just a bit, but it's a nice little added security benefit just to make sure that this guy is locked on here. Because if you don't have this stinger, you're not stealing this trailer, basically, right? So it's kind of got built-in anti-theft, which is great. So, um, but if you, as long as you got this locked on here, then you don't have to worry about somebody trying to pull this off to get you a normal ball. Cool? So what we're going to do now is just basically go back over our, our uh, center bracket, the frame bracket uh, measurements to make sure this is in the right spot, right to left and front to back on the frame. And that's where we're at. I know that I've got to move this a bit. And after your first trip, you're going to probably need to uh, make sure that you retighten these two because it can move a little bit and it usually kind of gets uh, in its groove and then you should be set to go after that. But uh, definitely make sure you redo this after your first trip or first couple hundred miles. So I'm about three and a half there and I am only about three here, so we've got to come over to this side a little bit more. I think at this point I can move it with that. Maybe I can. Let's see where I put that one. There it is. That's why we don't torque anything down at the beginning here, because uh, there's always a chance that you got to move some stuff around. So. I just loosely fit this on there, but we want to make sure it's loose enough to where it's going to move for me too. There we go. So again, you can make sure that it's centered on the tail and equidistant from front to back here and side to side. That's what we're looking for when it's in the middle of this guy. All right, so we're back here to this. We've uh, decoupled from the uh, tow vehicle. And the reason why we did that um, is because I wanted more flexibility with this guy here so that I could get this frame bracket kind of left to right. Um, it's easier also to kind of, uh, I guess, do any like other tightening and things. It's already on the coupler, so there's really not that big of a deal to unlatch at this point. It allows you to actually have your spring bars wherever you want to be. Um, also, depending on if, how close you are to the ground, sometimes it's easier to do that because you're not able to raise these things high enough to get these bars on. So once you couple the main onto here, if you want to pull your vehicle out, it's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. So just a little tip there. So um, after we did that, I was able to straighten this frame bracket where I wanted to get it to. Um, if you look down on this here with the camera, let's see if we can get it. You can see that it's actually centered here. And we're also centered from left to right. And we got the same distance from front to back here too, from the coupler. Now, um, like I said, after your first trip, you're gonna wanna uh, make sure that this does not uh, shift. Um, it is a U-bolt, so occasionally that will be the case, but we're gonna tighten these things down and torque them all the spec, and hopefully you won't have ever an issue with it. But check it after the first trip. It's good to check all of your torque settings just to make sure that nothing uh, uh, has wiggled its way loose and uh, you've got everything set. Once a year, when you do your walk around too, or even depending on how much you travel, some people travel a lot more than uh, it would take once a year, but uh, every three or four trips, just go through, just like you would with your car, make sure everything's tightened up and, uh, and good to go before your trip. So um, from here, uh, we're gonna reassemble the tray for our propane tank. Um, I think in this situation, we have self-tapping screws that, that mount for this guy. 
I'm going to uh, utilize some washers to go underneath here just to build it up just a little bit here. You can see how much I've got to go. Not much, like a quarter of an inch to build up uh, just to have a little bit more height over this, but you really wouldn't have to do that either. You could literally just set this guy on there and uh, it's gonna balance actually pretty decently too. But uh, I think we're just gonna throw some washers under there just so it's uh, nice, and, nice and level either way. But that's where we're at at the moment here. Um, after I get this piece done, we're gonna get everything tightened down to spec and then we're gonna uh, get this guy, uh, actually we'll do one other thing before that. We're gonna check and make sure once we um, uh, couple back into this, once we're all tightened up, that we've got enough chain for it because I can tell you right now that we're gonna definitely have to extend this. Um, then that's fairly typical with these guys. And uh, his brake wire, it looks like it's actually wound up here. So I think uh, once we cut this wire tie, we're gonna have plenty of room for this guy. So it shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue. Um, and uh, he has got like ridiculous amounts of, uh, of uh, wire here. So we're good to go on that. So he will not need to use the extension kit other than the chain piece here. So that can be the case. We usually recommend getting that extension kit because you may need two out of the three. You may need all three of those components, which is the chains, the breakaway wire extension and uh, extension, the seven pin harness extension for this guy. So um, I do recommend getting that either way. That way you've got all the stuff. If you don't need it for some reason, we'll just take it back from you, no big deal. So once we get this stuff uh, extended, get everything tightened down, we'll uh, get this recoupled and uh, we'll get on the road and maybe show you a few things there.